I could follow up with probably two or three questions, but we're almost out of time, and I, I want to want to leave a little bit of leave a, leave a few minutes for us to talk about the Hefter Institute and and maybe some some new new breakthroughs or new projects that are going on there that maybe maybe you could share with us. So I think that that would that would be of great interest to our people here. As you know, the Hefter Research Institute it's a nonprofit, uh, and we. So it's 2016. So we're celebrating our like 22nd anniversary. We started this in the early 90s. And at the time, it seemed like a kind of a aspirational idea. But now uh, it's kind of like every, everything that the, we envisioned with the Hefter, that good science done with psychedelics would, uh, would sort of result in sort of the rediscovery of their therapeutic of, you know, properties and their value, and we were always convinced of it. Well, now it's happening, you know, and so there's a lot of work to be done. We've moved, you know, there's been interesting research. We've shown that, uh, you know, on the policy and, and political level, these things can be studied under government-approved protocols. Uh, and so the challenge now, I think, is to take it to the next level and, and actually build on those discoveries and try to integrate them into medicine, you know, in whatever way that can be done. I think the hospice uh, path is very promising, uh, the treatment of addictions, you know, these things are hard to ignore. I mean, when you have a study that shows that psilocybin will be enabled people who have been lifetime smokers for 30 years, three packets a day, 80% of those people can give up cigarettes after two or three psilocybin sessions. So that's huge. That's hard for government agencies to, to dismiss because of the impact of smoking on, on healthcare and so on. So little by little, I think these things will be reintroduced into medicine. I think there's a great hesitancy on the other side of accepting this because you have to acknowledge in a certain way that these medicines treat disorders of the spirit and medicine has been concerned for the last 200 years or so to exorcise any suggestion of a spiritual nature uh, to healing and humanity and, and psychedelics kind of put that, put your face right into that. But slowly, slowly these changes are, are happening and when it happens it's going to transform medicine and that's good because medicine is a very dysfunctional activity right now. I mean look at it. it it's not really about healing people it's uh, you know I mean I mean it's that's almost an afterthought in terms of the way it operates so ultimately if it ran if it transforms medicine it will transform society and this is happening you know, um, I guess my concern is it's not happening fast enough, um, but um, you can only make it go so fast. So hopefully we'll get there before everything completely falls apart. <laughs> what, can, what, what can our our people, our audience, people who are watching this do to support the work of the Hefter Institute and, and find out more and just kind of get involved. Do you, do you have um, a, a, a place for them to go and find out more information? Yeah, absolutely. They can go to hefter.org. That's our website, H-E-F-F-T-E-R.org. Uh, we are not as visible uh, as MAPS. Uh, MAPS is the other organization. Uh, MAPS is also doing great work. Uh, but they're focusing on MDMA primarily uh, for PTSD right now. And I don't think that was part of their, you know, I mean, that it's just a matter of opportunity. This is also good medicine and there's a need for it. And that's where they're putting all their resources right now is to get this approved to treat primarily PTSD. Hefter has kind of staked out psilocybin in the same way. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, we didn't get together and say, you guys do MDMA and we'll do psilocybin. Anybody's free to do whatever they want. But our focus has been on psilocybin. And we've been investigating it for, uh, you know, uh, primarily for this end of life work, but also as a tool for spiritual development, which is kind of an interesting thing. We have a protocol. There's a protocol at Johns Hopkins right now. Uh, for religious professionals to we're trying to recruit 
priests and rabbis and imams and all kinds of religious professionals to enroll in this study. Very interested to see, number one, if how many people they get and what the outcomes of some of those are. Because I think, I think that religious professionals, I think that people, you know, they uh, go into religion because they want to help people. There's a compassionate element there. And then just like doctors, you know, they get into it. They get into these structured situations and they, they get very frustrated because, uh, you know, because it's not working. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think a lot of the frustrations that doctors have probably is shared by, uh, by you know, spiritual counselors and this sort of thing. It's like in the context of the way it's done, it's not working very well. So they're looking for new models. Um, so the Hefter's doing good work. Uh, really good work, and and we're facing a lot of the issues that MAPS is facing now as well in that if these medicines are ever going to be integrated into practice, we have to change their scheduling status. And, you know, as long as they're Schedule 1, it's very, very hard to use them outside. uh, Either illegally you can use them or if you have to use them in an FDA-approved protocol. They should be available to a wider population therapists and you got to change the status so even though our focus is scientific we can't avoid these policy issues and that that is going on now uh, where we're trying to get approval uh, essentially a status change for psilocybin Um, on my personal front i i'm working with some some close friends and colleagues uh, now uh, for a long time, I've wanted to start a company. I've always had these sort of entrepreneurial aspirations, uh, but never really, I don't have any business expertise. As a businessman, I'm a complete disaster as far as how you start a, start a company. So uh, a couple of years ago, I met up with a couple of gentlemen who kind of share my perspective, and we've started a, a new company. and. Uh, It's called Symbio Life Sciences, and it covers a whole range of activities, but mostly around uh, partly biosciences research, I think like the project we described at the Gita conference, if you heard that, and then more toward therapeutic and educational uh, type projects, developing new therapeutic programs to use primarily ayahuasca, and we have a, a big focus down in South America to do that. So that's all going forward. That's looking promising right now. We're actually getting, they never have enough support, but we're getting enough seed money together that we can go ahead with this, uh, with this Iboga project, which I'm excited about and where that's, that's a platform that's going to enable us to do a lot of other things, uh, you know, in the life sciences area, very much interested in kind of the, uh, you know, the biodiversity of the food base in South America. So many interesting foods that have never really uh, found their way to a global stage. So, you know, and, and all of the, these things are fraught with, with uh, you know, with, with challenges in a certain way, but uh, you have to preserve your, your ethical perspective, you know, and when you get into companies and capitalism and all that, but we are making an effort. Our corporation is a beneficial corporation. So, you know, profit is not the most important thing. Yes, we'd like it to be profitable. We want there to be benefits that result from what we do. And if we make a little less money, uh, we're fine with that. But with that attitude, of course, I mean, some investors say, well, this is interesting. No, thanks. So I'll, I'll take a pass on this. But other people they don't feel that way. So, so I'm pretty excited about that too. And that, that's kind of where my focus is going forward here. It feels like there's a lot of, there's a lot of threads here that, that we could talk about for a while. I'd love to, I'd love to do another one, one of these talks. And there's some stuff we could talk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, just, just talk about the, you know, you know, the Iboga. I mean, we could, we could, that could be a whole another talk. I, I feel like, you know, this is, this is hopefully the first of, of many conversations like this and, so yeah, before we go, I just wanted to say again, I mentioned it um, briefly in the intro, but 
Dennis's new book, The Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss. I'm almost done with it. It is a fantastic book. It's, it's, a, it's, it's adventure, it's healing knowledge, it's you know, spiritual, it has everything in it. And if you are a fan, which I am, and a lot of you are, I know, of Dennis and Terrence's work together, this is, this is a must. Uh, De- Dennis, where can they go to get it? Well, like I say, Amazon is probably the easiest, quickest way. You can also go to our website, which is just called Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss.com. And there's a, there's a PayPal, you know, there's a cart there. You can order as much as you want. There is actually a collector's uh, hardcover edition you can order from that site. I don't sell too many of those because that's a limited edition. You won't find that on Amazon. But the paperback, you can order from there. And that's the easiest way to do it. Or you can come to some of my events because, I, you know, when you do a self-published book, you're the shipping captain, you're the warehouse manager, you're, you know, so I just shipped about 400 books to Hawaii yesterday. So I'm hoping I don't have to take them home with me. <laughs> Tell people to show up and buy the book. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure that you won't have any left after, after uh, Hawaii, but um, Dennis, it was a pleasure talking with you. And, and, it, and I think there's a lot more to talk about. Hopefully this is going to be the, the first of many talks like this. Um, I hope so. Good good luck with this. And yeah, real pleasure. Uh, Nick and Maylene, you're doing a great work. This is important work that you're doing. So I had a good time. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you.